semester number two, lesson number nine. Our aim today is why did the United States emerge as a global power at the beginning of the 20th century? And really what we are looking at when the 20th century is the early 1900s. By the beginning of the early 1900s, the United States was the most powerful country in the world. Why did it become this powerful and how did it become this powerful? And the first thing I want to focus on here is manifest destiny, something we have learned about time and time again this year. And manifest destiny was that des desire to s expand westward from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the Pacific Ocean. All right, The belief that the United States was destined to expand across the continent and that it was their God-given right to expand westward, something that we have learned about all year. The Louisiana Purchase, the Gadsden Purchase, the Mexican Cession, all of this spread the United States and the people of the United States more towards the West, more towards the Pacific Ocean. By 1890, no frontier existed, and the U.S. began looking for new land outside the United States. So basically, by 1890, there was no more going west. They were at the furthest west they could be, and there was no more land for them. All right, So they had to start looking outside of the United States if they wanted more land. Immigrant groups, most notably from Scandinavian countries and Germany, had settled on the Great Plains and become farmers. And the West Coast had become a land of frontiersmen, as well as immigrants, most notably the Asian countries, such as China. And this is really what started to develop the West Coast of America. Now they needed to look outside for more land. All right, They had no more availability of land in the United States, in the continental United States, so they needed to expand outward. And that is going to play into the idea of imperialism, something you learned last year in global history. All right, imperialism is the concept that you know you're kind of creating an empire. You're expanding uh, U.S. The U.S. was expanding their foreign um, power and and controlling other parts of the world. There was a number of factors that pushed the U.S. to expand um, across the oceans. Uh, new technology. Communication and transportation between countries was becoming easier. And because of this, the world was becoming much more interdependent, meaning they were really working with each other and there was more communication, there was more trade between countries and all that. There was new markets and raw materials. All right, Businessmen wanted raw materials from other countries and business leaders and farmers wanted to sell these um, products overseas. There was the growth of naval power, the military. All right, protecting American trading routes, needing uh, places to refuel and restock. And if I were to tell you, you know, why, why or why, if I were to ask you why were the, why was this so important, I want you to think about these huge ships they had. And if they were sailing across the world, they needed places to refuel. They couldn't go, you know, they couldn't go all the way across the world without refueling. They needed places to stop and refuel. They needed places to restock their goods. And you know, this power of the American Navy allows them to expand across the globe. Following this idea is the, is the concept of social Darwinism. And we learned a little bit about Darwinism when we talked about business ideas. Now I want you to apply that idea of Darwinism or survival of the fittest to, to this concept of spreading the American quote-unquote culture. Americans believe that they were superior. They believed they should spread their culture since it was the best. They thought that them spreading their culture was a good thing because they thought they had the best culture. All right? And then there was this concept of survival of the fittest. America was the superior nation and could dominate less powerful or inferior nations. All right, This is similar to the business idea that we talked about. And if you look at this uh, picture on the right, it's you know just a joke, but it's saying America, they really felt like they were the best hope for mankind uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. So the question today for our Tech for Understanding is during the late 19th century, the growth of capitalism encouraged the United States uh, encouraged the United States imperialism because of the desire of business to do what? First of all, before we answer that question, I want to make sure you guys understand what imperialism means and also what capitalism means. Right? Capitalism is the idea of competition. Competition drives business. Right? free market. And, you know, we talked about that when we talked about business, how I think in our class we used the concept of pancakes. If, if person A is selling pancakes for $5 and person B is selling them for $3, more people are going to go to person B. 
And because of that, person A is going to want to sell their pancakes for less to keep, uh, you know, keep in business. Just like McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's. They all have to have the dollar menu because they all have to keep their prices relatively sim uh, similar so that, you know, they all get business. Uh, imperialism is the concept of a country controlling other countries or lands for their own gain. All right. So if we look at the check for understanding again, during the late 19th century, the growth of capitalism encouraged United States imperialism because of the desire of business to do what? A, obtain new markets for American products. B, compete with foreign industries. C, provide humanitarian aid to poor nations. Or D, industrialize uh, underdeveloped nations. And take a second to think about that. The correct answer is A, obtain new markets for American products. All right. American business uh, businessmen wanted to be able to sell their products to more than just American uh, more than just the American public. For that to happen, the United States needed to expand and obtain new markets. Controlling other countries for economic gain is known as imperialism, and I want to make sure you understand that concept of imperialism. Uh, today, tomorrow in class, you will be doing a diary, and this is just a teacher model. You can look it over if you want, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow in class. Have a good night.